up guys Eden here and well here comes another visual novel for you guys I've gotten a lot of requests for this one um, because mostly you guys know that I specialize in one shots or kinetic visual novels so I'm going to take a crack at Juniper's Knot um, I read this a long time ago uh, I can't really recall when exactly um, so the story's kind of not really fresh on my mind, uh, but it, uh, from what I remember, it does kind of tug at the heart, uh, the heartstrings a little bit. So, um, for my 20, <laughs> I'm so behind guys, I'm so sorry, but for my, um, I do believe 24,000 subscriber special, uh, I will present to you guys this short kinetic visual novel known as Juniper's Knot. So without further ado, let's get started, shall we? Much of these stone walls and floors have withered into dirt and dust, revealing the foundation. Much of the ceiling, too, has crumbled to the ground, layering in flecks and bits. Below me now is such tired soil. Tired, tired soil. Pa. There isn't much to do here but burn dead leaves and wait. Watch the smoke rise, curl up fresh, and tickle the inside of your nose. Dull as bones, it is. What can I do? I'm stuck. Some might say cursed. I'd rather say bound. I don't like to think very much about it. I kneel to the small fire I've started, taking up a few embers and loam into my palm. It's this glow that stirs me and reminds me that my heart is still beating. I bring the scorched earth close to my face, shut my eyes and breathe it in. I taste it, and spit. It's barren. I'm probably going to wait here forever. What? There's an unnatural rustling not far off. West? West, I? What is it? Who? Another? Here? My eyes sharpen and my ears perk up. I feel my heart thumping into my throat. Should I be forward? Give a call? Would that work? Cry out, plead, help, help, damsel. Full sort of lie, would that work? No, go still. Listen, just listen. Whatever it is, it's right busy about here. Noise is tumbling rough from old doorways. Chests wine open, shops and homes are explored. A scavenger then? Someone found this place? Tch. Hmm. Hearing these sounds is just odd. It shouldn't be odd, but it is strange. I should remember such sounds. Oh, the noise is getting closer, is it? I'm imagining this. No, 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 surely it's in the manor now, poking around the kitchen and lounge. Hmm. I decide on the chance that it will find its way to the ballroom to stand. I take a good posture and await this new company. And to my surprise, it... He shows up at the door within the next minute. A boy? A man? What kind of thing's this? Again? He's carrying a pack and has a bottle on his waist. Maybe he's a traveler then? Doesn't look like he's noticed me yet. He's just wandering in, stare adrift. After a few steps, I catch his eye. He moves a little closer to look me in the face, and then some more to see my feet. He stops there. He's staring now and doing nothing more. Come here. 
As if realizing something, he stiffens. His heart beats loud in the air. I need your help, so come on. Come here. He doesn't bend. What is he up to? What does he think this is? I speak again, this time with a little bite. The hell you waiting for, tit? Oh, oh, have I been rude? Have I been rude? Oh, well. You are cordially invited to move your dumb legs. The first conversational words I've spoken in centuries, they could have been worse. He shakes with fear and stands back. A fiend? Slow, are you? What does it matter? What are you pissing your trousers for? Get over here! Uh, no way, you'll eat my soul. Oh, what? A smile cracks along my face. <laughs> your soul? Oh my, oh my, oh my, oh my. When was it last that I laughed like this? I grin, I grin so brightly, watching, chuckling while he shrinks back a little, and a little more. <laughs> and now, person, person, you're just perfect, a jester, won't you lend an ear? Afore I e eat your soul. <laughs> At my laughter, he glares. Stealing himself, he answers me. You're not catching me, demon, got that? I've read the stories. I'm tired, but I ain't stupid. Am I that famous? Ah, oh, mercy, I left a mark. You know what I mean. Hell, I really don't. Fiends, devils, demons, all of ya. I know how it is. And how is it? You're all foul, and you try to trick people. Trick you? Trick... Tr <laughs> oh... Oh, I really just can't believe it. What's happened in the years I've been gone? <laughs> and what if I'm not trying to trick you, person? What if I just want to hear you? Just want to hear me? What the hell? Like, what's it you've read, lad? Do tell, I'd love to hear a story. I'm a little bored. I think I'll just leave. You turn tail on a bloodthirsty, wicked fiend? Look, I know something dirty when I see it. You ain't fooling no one. <laughs> He's so precious. All right, all right. I'll tell you what. I'll tell you I, like all us fiends, devils, demons, am plainly trying to win your extravagant soul through my dastardly wit. Honest and true, I'm a rook. But please, please, at the least tell me of what you've read. Why the hell do you want to listen to me so much? Because I'm bored, and your voice, ah, your voice, I swoon. Bah, horse feathers. I really do want to listen. Would you be so kind? Ah, he's genuinely considerate. Such a delight. I do want to hear him. In the meantime, I look him over a little more finely. He's got a fair face, but through the fabric of his shirt, I can see that he's muscled. A surprise. Even the soldier boy seemed a bit lean back in the days I rode at Marley. I wonder what it is he does. He smells like an animal, in the most pleasant way that can be said. Mm, that's quite good. Also, he has the faintest scent of watercress about him, mingled with black oil. What a peculiar lad. <sighs> hmm? I'd really better not stick around. <laughs> I guess I can tell you some things, though. Uh, yeah, I guess I can tell you. Long as you stay put, you hear? What's keeping me from you is more powerful than I care to challenge, person. Yeah, right, whatever. Here's a story, one from a book I read a lot when I was little. <laughs> oh, pardon, pardon. I find it very hard to think of you any littler. Quiet. Mm. There was a cobbler in Whittaker who had nothing to eat. He was poorer than dirt, and he didn't have a girl, and it made him real sore. He didn't have a girl? A dame, a sweetheart. He didn't have a wife. Ah, uh, continue. While he was walking down an alley, he met this man. 
He had on a dark cloak with a hood that covered his eyes and the cobbler couldn't make heads or tails of it. He stopped and asked the cloak man if he'd like his shoes worked on the... That's stupid. Why would he do that? Because he needed all the work he could get. Well, he should have gone around ruining shoes if that's what he needed was work. <laughs> the cloaked man said he wasn't wearing shoes, but he could use a new pair. But obviously, the cobbler's a cobbler, so he don't make shoes. He tells him that. And the cloaked man says, actually, I could really use some new shoes. The cobbler looks at him weird and says he can get them if the guy's sick. And the cloaked man says, would you do that? I'd do something for you then. And the cobbler says, like what? And the cloaked man says, perhaps anything. He leans forward darkly as he says this. I smirk at the action. And now I know what you're thinking. I've heard this one before and know how it goes. Well, you don't. Because the cobbler says, perhaps not. And he walks away. How exciting. But here's the thing, while he's walking, he notices the alley's longer than usual. He doesn't think about it though, he thinks he's just tired from work and keeps walking. But while he's walking, he sees another man in a cloak. He stops and asks if the man can use his shoes getting worked on and the cloak man says he doesn't have any shoes. The cobbler stops and looks at him and says he better get moving. The cloak man says he could really use some new shoes. And while he's moving, you know? I nod. He keeps running into this man in a cloak and he can't find the end of the alley. Actually, every time it takes longer and longer till he sees the man in the cloak. On the eighth time he runs into the man, he stops and asks what's the game. And the cloak man looks at him with yellow eyes, says he could really use some new shoes. For what? The cobbler says. I don't know, the cloak man says, perhaps anything. What do you want? The cobbler knows exactly what he wants, but fiends have yellow eyes, and he knows a fiend. <laughs> Nonsense. I actually sighed hearing that. So what you're telling me, if this story is anything good to adhere to, is that I might have already trapped you. Dunno. I don't think you did. Why not? He shrugs. I don't think you did. Hmm. I really must say, your manner of storytelling is quite weird. What? It's strange. Oh? I don't know. It's just very strange to my ears. I guess. How's your story end? The cobbler gets desperate and makes a pact with the fiend to get new shoes by the next day. The fiend will give him gold for him to do that. So the fiend gives him the gold, but he doesn't make it. The fiend traps him in the alley so he can't leave. His soul is taken and he's damned. The fiend eats his soul and leaves the alley for a farm. A farm? Yeah, I know. <laughs> I snort. That's comedy. I think it's supposed to mean something, but uh... Point is, don't get caught up with fiends no matter what. You're getting caught up with a fiend right now. Well, you don't feel right. A what? He shakes his head. Nothing. I look at him and try to figure him out. Mm, figure out his opinions and his story. In the time he's told it, he seems to have taken another idea of me. I'm not sure why that is, either. I appreciate you telling me that story. Don't mention it. Mm. So opaque. You still wary of me? Yeah, a little. I frown. Well. Do you want me to tell you another story? Hmm. The unsolicited offer throws me. Is he really asking? But no, if I'm too eager, I can't ask for that. No. I pause. No, I'm fine. If you say so. I'm gonna go now. Go? Yeah. <laughs> I have to go, so I'm going. He begins to turn around. <laughs> stay! Please stay, please! I won't take your soul, honest, I won't. And then, like an idiot, I move my hand out, reaching for him with singular wanting. I move past the second meter, past this circle's edge with my fingers, and withdraw with a start as they're set afire.
Dropping to my knees, I scream. I cry out and howl, clutching the flames and smothering them. Tears crawl down my face and I snarl with pain. I shut my eyes and moan. I hear him step a bit closer. You're stuck here? Looking up at him from the ground, I feel my teeth chattering. Oh no. I know why I want him to stay. Yes, I know. To rend him. Because as if, as if it just wasn't so funny enough that vines sweat down from the walls and grass is born through stones so close, just outside this putrid circle. Now there's a human breathing before me. Comedy. Everywhere but here, but near to me, to my desolating blood. These years have damned me, cut and clawed beneath my skin. Scars invisible, but nevertheless blighting. I hate it. I hate, hate it so much. I hate the feeling it gives to my heart and the strength it takes in kind. I hate it! My flesh heats and I look away from him. Looking into his eyes enrages me. How long have you been there? Long enough to beg. Long enough, you hear? Too long I've been in this stinking pile. Doesn't matter to you. I want to know. Well, I don't want to tell you, I... Sorry, miss. Miss? I took a look at my clicking, stuttering hand, my sight still blurred with tears. It's sizzling. Small blazes dance between the fingers. I take my tongue to it, soothing the burns. You're a bold one, I, calling me a flap. Uh, what? Huh? No, no, you're, you're no flapper, lady. It means something different now. Miss is just what you're supposed to call older ladies, out of respect. Lapping the flames from the back of my hand, I glance at him. That right? Are you okay? I suck my ring finger and squint. What's that? All right. Fine. Is that okay, all right? <laughs> all right. Aye, aye. I am a fiend, yes. Feel fast. But I can still feel it snap and pop in the joints. I whistle cool air through my digits and take myself from the ground. Hmm. Are you going to stay? I... I could. Ah. Uh, oh. Thank you. I'm actually lost right now. Ah. Uh, ah. Uh, lost, is it? Lost. Ha! <laughs> That's a sweet irony. Huh? Don't look so addled, person. The irony's quite obvious here, isn't it? He squints. Think! After all, I cannot even be lost. Forever and ever I'll know where I am, and where I am is... stuck. I laugh again, but he doesn't find it funny. He doesn't seem to find it much of anything at all. I quit it, wiping away a figurative tear. <laughs> oh, oh, I know this place so intimately it redden your face. He jerks and gives his head a shake. If you... Hmm? Uh, if you know where this is, do you know where's more? Ah, so earnest. Don't know what more is. I know moors. Moors? Aye, moors. Moors, you follow? I don't know what those are. My, my, ain't this a right dizzy chick we're dancing? Time's making fools of us both. <laughs> His look's a bit hazy, as though he's having a hard time keeping his eyes fresh. I turn my head silently. What's more, person? Where I was born. Live. A town? A new town? City. Think it's been there for a while. That right. He doesn't speak, and I glance over just quickly enough to catch him at the end of nodding. Did you know... This place was a moor for a time? Miss, I don't know. What is that? It is a dead place. A wet place. <sighs> I too was born in a moor. 
Ugh. Ugh. Can't your stomach read a mood? Bleeding hell, I was about to tell a tale. Sorry. You're hungry, is it? Starving. Us fiends here, we only eat souls and only for pleasure. Quit joking. Joking. Hey, you got any food? Uh, what you what are you blithering on about now? I look like I got food? I don't got any food, idiot. However, here. I thrust out my hands just before the barrier, palms up. Uh? Give me the chestnuts in your pack. I smell them. He hesitates. Why? So I can gobble them up. What do you think? I'll cook them for you. They're not long from the branch of the ground. Smells like you haven't cooked them, and nor have you eaten them. You prefer the taste of them cooked? He nods slowly. I twitch my fingers, waiting. Is there something you want, uh, for this? Your company for the morning till noon. That it? I nod. Okay. Deal. His words spoken like a knell, then resonates deeply, echoing, and shakes ash from the walls. Startled, the boy covers his mouth. Deal, was it? Hmm. I smile. Here. Did I just... Aye, you made a pact. <laughs> mm. Shaking his head, he sighs. Wordlessly, carefully, he takes off his pack and opens it up. Withdrawing a bushel of nuts in two hands, he moves forward. I look down at him, still waiting. And with steady movements, he brings his hands to mine. He holds my gaze and I don't move at all. But I do think. I think, wait. Couldn't I just... Couldn't I just... You know, quickly, just. My hands tense, but it ends with a thought. Hmm. He drops the heap into my palms. My fingers curl around it. Again, I turn up my lips. Seeing this, he hops back. Give me a moment. I take all but one into my left hand, holding the last between my right thumb and forefinger. Opening my mouth, I bring it between my teeth and puncture it with one of my fangs. I bite through the shell, making a rough cut from one end to the other, and take it out. Observing the inner flesh of it, I spit out the shreds. Satisfied, I go on to carve the second, third, fourth, and so on. When I've finished, I hold the chestnuts aloft and make a hearth of my hand. This'll take a while, person, but not so long. Might we talk some? Uh, sure. Then have a seat. Where do we leave off before your stomach so rudely interrupted? He sits, chin on his knees, and eyes half-lidded. More something? Ah, uh, yes. I'll tell you a story about Moors in return for yours. Though rather than a story, a chat would be nice, I Save you a story for a bit later. What do you want to talk about? Moors... Oh, right. My more, eh, mine. Hmm. There really isn't much to say, come to think of it. You said you were born there? Aye, like all fiends, I was born in waste. You've read about us, aye? About how we make barren anywhere we stand. Unconsciously drain life from Earth for our sustenance. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> Pallid land and Calinus loft. Air crawling low and damp with miasma. The pith of plants choked. Sterile. I felt my face twisting to scowl. Sounds, uh... Sounds hideous. I know because it is. Did you grow up there? Huh, a neat question. Aye, aye, I did. Had a mother and a father. Always got me wondering, is this where I'll be when I get old? A bloody moor? Huh. Guess not. 
You left it then? Left it for many places. What was it like growing up there? Tedious. Maybe I shouldn't have brought this up at all, I... You just don't want to talk about it. That's okay. No, no, it's not a matter of okay. There's just not much of anything to talk about. It's all very colorless. Mm. What about yours? My what? Your more. Oh, it's nothing really special, just your typical city. Typical to me is not the same to you. Well, it's big, loud, streets are packed with folks, lots of smoke and brick. My mom and pop run a farm near there because they're crazy. Oh, is that where your scent's from? My scent? You smell like herbs and horses. It's quite adorable. Mm. You also smell like black oil, but I'm not sure where from. Uh, city's pretty modern. I have to lift canisters of oil from place to place every Wednesday. Oh, tough. He nods. <laughs> Very tough. Hey, knock it off, will ya? I do hard work. He kind of slurs his sentence, but is nevertheless determined to appear strong. I believe you. For your noble, strong efforts, I think it's time for your story. You ready? He shrugs. I clear my throat and loosen up my shoulders somewhat, poising my fire hand dramatically. Mm hmm. Did you know that stars sometimes act as rain in the night sky? You mean like a meteor shower? Shh. I've heard of it, but never seen it. Well, I've heard of it and know it because I've seen it. Imagine this. Thousands, thousands of lights and they all bleed along the cold, cerulean mirror above. Slowly, very slowly. Follow? They're so very slow that as they make the long stretch out above you, you hardly notice their drag. It is an impeccable slowness. Imagine it. He nods very slowly and nods in another way, drifting into my memory. And flash! A flare of the fire in my hand. The chestnuts wax, splitting, crackling. He jumps, the light catching in his eyes. Flash! <laughs> flash! Flash! With each of these words, I stoke the flames. They lick up and dance wildly. Each single brilliant streak cuts through the lights, independent and free. And then, it dies. The magic in my palm fades and sighs. It pulses, fades, pulses, fades. His eyes glaze over. Like this, like a heart's last beating, death is quick to these stars. Straying my eyes from the light, had they so turned I hadn't noticed, I gaze upon the boy. Say, person, that sorrowful to you? Huh? He thinks of an answer. It is. There isn't a right answer, person. You don't have to consider it like there is one. You think it's sorrowful. I do. That's interesting. Truly interesting. I end the fire, leaving the chestnuts to cool. I blow on them and breathe on them, ears twitching. These are done now. I hold them out to him. My end of the bargain's met, and you know what? I'll do you a favor. I'll go ahead and roast the rest of your chestnuts in my fire. Here. I motion to the dead leaves. I'll do this for free. For no deal. All that's left now is for you to stay. Squinting, he waits a little, but soon enough crawls forward on his hands and calves, his pack in tow. He stops at the edge of the circle and takes the fruits from my hand. He looks at me, wearing a kind of ugly expression. What? Settling onto his rear, he keeps looking at me, but a bit less ugly. He seems to be wondering something. Eventually, he looks at the nuts in his hand instead, his face softening. He shells one and pops it into his mouth. His face flushes naturally. He chews a little. 
He pushes his pack into the circle with his foot, shifts back a few feet, and speaks. Which part of that was the story, miss? Well, look at that. You aren't entirely daft. I take up the bag from the ground, shake it a little. Doesn't smell like there's anything more than chestnuts in here. I open it up and check, and sure enough, finding the things in excess. Some with the burr still on, some still green. I toss those ones. I still rummage through it, just in case there might be something of interest. There's not. Twas a preamble, twas. There's a story to it for certes. I told you I've seen this. Blinking, he nods. With a hollow sound, I crack one of the chestnuts apart in my mouth. I grow the fire at my feet and drop it in there. No more flashy tricks now. As I reiterate these actions, I speak to the boy. I was not alone with those stars then. I was with another, Miss. Dropping another into the fire, I watch its fall. My eyes lose some of their color. She was fair, young, and human. A perfect miss. Such a charming girl. We would dance together and sing, press close when unseen. <sighs> I was fascinated with her, I think, and so when she'd gotten melancholy, I brought her from town to those stars. I had the ache in my knees, knew the even tide would be crying, and had figured the beauty of it would settle her. The boy constricts his brow, chewing somewhat sadly. Oh, not to worry, not to worry. It did. It did. He swallows. I've never understood the custom of man. I've always been free-thinking and never bound to the thoughts of others. My actions at night, no. My actions altogether, none took kindly to it when she returned. What happened? What happened? What? Well, after I took her back to town, she was plowed and beaten and beaten and beaten and plowed and beaten and beaten until she could not move or breathe. The boy stares, a nut in his hand held stiff only so near to his parted lips. I buried her under the sky where I last saw her smiling. He closes his mouth to frown. A century later, I returned to her spot and found an olive tree grown there. It was the sickest thing. Gnarled and twisted it was. Furious, I raised the entire plant. Its trunk, its bark, its branches and leaves. I scorched its roots. Would have torn out the roots, though, refrained to not disturb her. Yet last I'd seen, it remained. Alive born fruit, and uglier than before. <laughs> Isn't that the most wonderful story one can tell? No. <laughs> I dropped the last of the chestnuts into the leaves. Didn't you mess up the guys who did it? Mess up? You're a fiend. You didn't eat them? I didn't eat them. What happened to them doesn't matter to the story. I want to know. I don't want to tell. Ugh. Seriously, miss? You know, when kids in the neighborhood mess with my kid brothers, I beat their faces in with a stick. That's what love is. It's taking care of your mates. Love? That what you figure from this tale? That I fancied her? Well, obviously. Mm. It's my story, person, not yours. Come off it. It is an old story, and it is only a story. Stop. What? Man. He chucks the shell in his hand against the wall at his side. His expression sour. Fine. I was just entertaining you as I cooked. That's stupid. Bollocks. I don't want to hear that from your fool arse. Well, it's stupid. It's stupid, forget it. What? What's this? You starting? Your stone's dropping now? Drop them any further, I'll tear them out. Tear out your tongue, too, here. Don't start with me. 
The boy freezes, hand hovering over his last chestnut. I'll rip your legs off, understand? Don't start with me. Last thing you need to be worrying over is your soul, since I'll rend you limbless if you start with me, and there won't be anything to be holding that soul at all. You start with me, I'll kill you. We clear, person? He quickly nods. I chuckle. <laughs> You're a cute thing, aren't you? Quailing so tender. I can't move from here, person. You know that. Quivering, he speaks up. It just sounded pretty real. Did it? The boy lets out a loud sigh, shaking as it leaves him. Still vibrating with fear, he fumbles opening his last nut. There looks to still be a bit of shell on the fruit, but he does not notice until it's in his mouth. He frowns a bitter frown and calms down somewhat, now distracted by the taste. Some of these are finished, mind. I nod at the fire. Can toss them to you if you like, if you're still scared. Nah, I'm good. He rocks his head. I'm fine, but I'm pretty tired. Could you toss them anyway? Aye, aye, surely could. Also shall, but only if you agree to stay with me till sunset. It's noon already? It is. I sit down myself, lounging across from him. He stares, his vision slowing and jumping and trying to focus. Eventually, he squints, leveling his eye on me. Mm. Didn't you say you'd do it for free? Not this person. I said I'd cook these, and I am. He furrows his brow and frowns. Fine, I'll stay with you. Deal. The ballroom rattles with the sound. He isn't surprised by it. I smile again. So is that what you are? Tired? Y yeah I pick up a chestnut and throw it to him. He catches it somewhat dazedly. How long have you been gone from your moor, person? I don't know. Two days? I throw him another. Oh, isn't that a long time? No. It's a joke. Laugh. I don't want... If I laugh, it'd basically be like me laughing at you. <laughs> Answering with a greater joke instead of simply laughing. You really are a jester. A greater joke? I send one more his way. My existence. My predicament and existence together are the greatest joke in all history. I know this, and I've missed half of it. Stop. Such a soft lad. I tilt my head and regard him. I keep leafing through my head book for the memory of another like you, but I'm finding nothing. I have so many memories, did you know? So many. So many travels, delights, regrets. A boy shouldn't be so soft. The world's so rough it'll shape him ugly. Languidly breathing, the boy eases into his arms a little more. Or it was. It was a rough place. If you don't know mores, maybe this world's also soft. Now. It explained you. He blinks. Where I was raised, and my moor, that was quite rough. You know why I laughed earlier when you mentioned souls? You know why I joke of souls? He blinks. So many of us fiends are so obsessive over souls. It's just extraordinary souls, not unremarkable ones like the ways yours feel. Have to look for those mature, spirited humans, their souls heavy with character and experience. He closes his eyes. A newborn soul, for example, won't do anything for you. It is special, though, yes. A newborn soul is quite pure. Quite pure, really. His back rises and falls. Pex scania. Pex es non. Exquisite. I chuck a chestnut at his hair. It bounces off into the ground. He doesn't even flinch. I look into the fire. I gaze into the fire. The fire. These stupid things inside it. Psst, piss, these stupid things. For a flash of a moment, I consider turning them to ash, but doing so would break my pact. 
No, it wouldn't. I still won't. I would rather burn this thing. This boy. Blasted. Should have grabbed him while he was at the edge. Would it have been so simple? Or do I need his agreement to exchange his life for mine from the circle? Am I forgetting? Am I forgetting the conditions? Shh. This boy be damned for rekindling hope in me. Pressing my hand into my face, angry, roughly, I glare at him through parted fingers. I breathe out. If I could just lunge out from here and take him, I'd do it. I would. I growl. My body still feels the sensation of when I last forced myself through the barrier. The searing into my marrow, the purging of my eyes. And I still would. I'd still lunge out from here. I'd bloody well do it thrice to get out of this blighted circle. Why didn't I grab him before? He was at the edge. Why didn't you pull him in? Take him! I've forgotten so much. Oh, God. God to cry to heaven. I... I... What? Is this what it was like? Having passions? I want to die. I wanted to leave, but not anymore. This is passion. Passion. Passio. Passio. I want to die. I bite my tongue again, burst blood and drown in myself, nails in my wrist tearing, and dig and tug and pull out my bleeding throat again. <sighs> to... <sighs> Whining silence every day. What's, what's a day? Two days, he said. What are days, huh? What are months? What are years? I've been here centuries, centuries, centuries. Was it longer? Did even centuries? Oh. Quiet settles in and the wind dashes the leaves. Scraping leaves, scraping leaves, scrape howl, raindrops falling again, again, again. Embers in my hands, smoke. Sometimes I scream just to hear a voice. <clears throat> what happened to my life? My jaw is quaking, my eyes are warm. I wish you had come here. Taking my hands from my face, I look at this peaceful, peaceful... He's so peaceful, isn't he? Peaceful little cunt. Wake up! I throw another chestnut at him, missing. Wake up! Another... And another. See me, Kerr? See me? This body? It does not grant the bloody piece of sleep. I take up a handful and toss them. I haven't slept a minute, bastard son of a slut bitch, two pins whore. I haven't slept a second. I have been always awake. Two days? You miserable wretch, and I've only been here two days. I drink a pub dry. Damn you. You hear? When you're dead, I'll find and spit on your grave. I'll plant an olive tree there, you rat bastard. I throw and throw and throw, missing, missing, missing. I hate you. I hate... <laughs> Am I sobbing now? A fiend sobbing? <laughs> Why? I drop my arms to the ground, crying in shakes. For the life of me, I can't remember a time ever crying. 